So for my business, um, I do have a side hustle and it's actually called Man Made Trading. So therefore I do like stocks, investments, and what I use is I use a virtual private server to connect my account to thousands of accounts and I trade them and over time people make profit and then we split the profits at a later date or the person is on a subscription based service. So therefore uh, the first step when adapting a management information system is to basically create a system in regards to investments uh, in a management information system that can help strengthen the project organization. Um, and by doing that, you need to identify tangible benefits, which MIS will bring to your operation, define the scope of the organizational, uh, regional and country level. And then on top of that, def define and def develop measurements to assess whether MIS is successful. So within my business, it is a sole proprietorship. So therefore, unfortunately, there isn't really that many levels of operation. And then on, the, on top of that, a lot of the services are outsourced because if you think about it from this perspective, um, if it's an investment business, right? The goal is to invest. So therefore, any miscellaneous things such as managing a virtual private server or providing resources to potential prospects in regards to installing their account so therefore they can be a customer. Unfortunately, it deters from the performance if it's just one person. So therefore, within my management system, I'm the person that's a CEO, that I make the executive decisions. Then on the, on the bottom, I have a collaborative team. Um, I use a UK broker, which allows me to connect my brokerage account to thousands of accounts remotely. And within decades seconds, I can make decisions, whether they're good, bad, or mediocre. And everyone makes the same decision at their percentage level with their specific account size. So therefore that's excellent. Um, unfortunately, besides that, in regards to the supply chain, I do handle the supply chain. In regards to the marketing, I do handle marketing, stuff like that. Um, for marketing, it is, um, using social platforms, but really it's just, um, what's the word, word of mouth, because I like to have organic interactions because I was a, a teacher uh, that taught how to invest for about five years. And unfortunately, but fortunately, a lot of people don't really know much about investing and go into investments and then they lose investments. So therefore, I just love to like introduce them to the idea let them have an educated decision and then when they want to pursue that's when they become a customer so therefore it's a slightly different structure why do i do that um think about it like this uh does it hurt my team uh does it hurt my system no because the way that the system is made it is made so therefore um there's no potential losses for the company because A, the company's insured, and B, the only charge that is charged is the initial charge, which is the master server, which is only $28 a month. $28 a month for a six-figure business, that's amazing. But besides that, uh, form your team. When looking at this perspective, it's just a, su a successful implementation of a management information system, which requires a combination of people and technology. So therefore, uh, <laughs> to provide a successful combination of people and technology. Um, you just need to determine the resources and skills needed uh, to develop, scale, and sustain your business. For my business, yet again, the power of one, and all I have to do is make the right decisions, and by having a team work with me remotely to handle my services, they process the series of virtual private server transactions throughout these accounts. So therefore everything's seamless. So therefore the scale of production can be sustainable and develop over time. Um, another thing that the system needs to do is uh, provide requirements in regards to communicating 
and uh, it's basically just an understanding between future users of the system and the people that design it. And yet again, I'm just saying this again, the best thing that I would say for a company when introducing a potential client is discussing the value of the company and the value of investing before even pursuing a client. Because of the nature of my business, if I just pick a client that doesn't know anything about investing and they lose money, that is reputation. So therefore, by creating social platforms which teach people how to invest and then introducing them to the product, now they have it. Uh, enough information to successfully a trust our business and then b make a good decision in regards to either making their own investments or making us do it um another thing you need to be aware of is um lack of understanding between people that use the system and people that are running the system so therefore there is a lot of intricacies once again it's just education and just consultation. Adding the consultation within uh, the cost of production, yes, it does take time, but you can charge for the cost of production. I do charge for the cost of production, only a $50 fee initially, but by doing that, it allows a component where they'll be able to fully understand what the product, the product's value brings them. Um, another thing that you need to be aware of are there any technical requirements such as electricity, internet connectivity, uh, or anything like that, offline data entry, automatic trans transmission of data? Unfortunately, but fortunately, no. All I have to do to run this business is run it for my smartphone. As long as I have my 4G LTE or 5G data available, I'm able to run the business anywhere in the world and then the virtual private server will be able to pick up the information that I process within my account and then transfer the information over to the customer. And the way the business is ran, everything's all in-house. They sign up through the website, the charges are processed reoccurring monthly, so therefore everyone wins. If I have a business that makes you money, you make money, you're always gonna pay. And if it's always on reoccurring, there's no intricacies in regards to how everything works. But besides that, there's operating costs, and the only operating cost is, I think, if I were to say per year, less than $1,000. And that's just scaling it in regards to having the best internet service, having the best, um, uh, that that's about it. Uh, having the best internet service and having the master account. Master account is twenty eight dollars a month, so that's two hundred eighty dollars. The internet service it's about hundred dollars a month. That's about thousand dollars. About twelve hundred eighty dollars. It's twelve hundred eighty dollars. And then besides that, maybe taxes that you may charge for your business. But by traveling around the world. You can kind of run away from your taxes, you know, tax evasion. Don't do that though, but you can. Um, but let's say implementation plan. How do you build a business that has little cost and expand it? Um, the goal is to have 10 people and you provide them the best excellent customer service. And then from there, they like the service and they'll recommend it to 10 people. And then you offer an incentive for recommend, recommending them to the company. So therefore, they're more than likely to pursue to do this. Then 20% of 100% of people yield 80% of the results. So therefore, say two people come from those 10 people. Now you have 30 clients. Now, if you're charging them anywhere from 50 to $100 a month to run a service that makes the money that they'll, they're gonna stay because they're gonna be making money, now the process just keeps uh, scaling. And because the business is scalable because it only takes one person to run it, there's not a lot of variables 
And if there were variables, it's based off of the market and you can't control the market, unfortunately. But you can control risk allocation and it's based off of each account size, which is very possible with the system that we do use for the virtual private server. But besides that, um, there's very little operational risk, deployment risk, and a lack of governance. The only risk that you will probably have with this system is if the market crashes, then you lose. But as long as the market doesn't crash and you make smart decisions, you'll always have clients. But have a great night.